How could you not notice a man sticking a banana in your tailpipe? Welcome to Black Irish Podcast. Welcome to an all new episode of Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brendan McCorkle, and Mike is black on black on black, you dig? Crawford, what's up? <laughs> what's going on, man? How are you today? Good. You're all darkened out. I mean, last week we did say we're going to come back bigger and blacker, but you really took that to heart. <laughs> no, I'm just dressed up for work, man. You also I'm look buffed out. this week, like, pff, dude. <laughs> Yeah, don't you? Uh, You're turning into a real I boy. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm trying to raise a couple of men over here, and it is, you know, I'm the one doing it, you know, half the time. <laughs> so I kind of got to take responsibility for when they act weird. I, I dropped off my four-year-old at his little preschool mm-hmm. thing, and... <laughs> walk in and did I already tell you this? He said like this little girl says hello to him. So I go and drop him off and this little girl's like, hi Connor. Like as we're walking in the building, hi Connor, ignore, get to the front desk, sign in, go through the next door down the hallway. Hi Connor, ignore, get in the, and I'm like, buddy, why don't you say hello or whatever? Go in the classroom, hang up the backpacks. Hi, Connor. Like, in his face this time. And he just, like, walks away. And then, so it's, like, kind of, like, I'm doing, I don't know, to the mom. And then the other teachers, like, just kind of giggling a little. So the fourth time, like, he goes to wash his hands. I'm about to say goodbye. And she's like, hi, Connor. I'm like, Connor, why don't you say hi? And then she just looks at her and looks at me and goes, I'm bored. I was like, oh, no. (laughs) I mean... It's good to not give uh, give anybody attention that you're not interested in, but you should say hello. You should be say kind. Hello. Always be kind. <laughs> this dude's just like this girl ain't worth my time. I'm not saying hello. <laughs> Come on, man, that's not very nice. He's also a, he acts like a psychopath though, and I don't know if it's he learned any of this he stuff acts from like him. a psychopath. Yeah, but like in a cute childish way. Like we were the other day we were playing a game and so we're playing charades. Okay, charades the game where you act out something, you gotta guess what the thing is. But it's like he's four. So we're doing just like animals. Like we just gotta guess what animal are you, whatever. And then so he's like, No, we could do anything we want. And so this guy so he's like gets in my face and is like, Daddy, don't cheat. I'm like, cheat. We're playing off a deck of invisible cards where we have to pretend like we picked a card and then go do it. How am I going to cheat? This kid is like so worried about somebody getting over on him that he's like, hey, man, I'm watching you in this invisible pretend game. I'm like, dude, have I made you that paranoid that you got to win that bad? <laughs> Winning is always the goal, man. And we do a lot of board games and stuff. He just started to play Like we play Go Fish everywhere now. That's his new thing. Okay. So we bring, which is great because I always used to bring a deck of cards. Like I always had a deck of cards on me, like in my bag, in my sometimes in my pocket, in my car, like always ready for a big poker game. But now it's funny because now I bring cards everywhere so we can play Go Fish. It's much different dynamic than back in the day. (laughs) Go Fish. Go for it. That's Connect Four. I'm sorry. Mixed up my game. They brought Guess Who back. I don't know what they call it, but it's something different now. Because <laughs> the woke people had to get a, a game about description off the uh, off the market. Can't do that. <laughs> Can't do what? The whole game of Guess Who is it's a bunch of different looking people, and you have to say, does this person have glasses? Does this person have white hair? Does this person have light skin? Does this person, whatever. And then you narrow it down and go, is it George? And so they took it off the market for years because people were like, that's a racist game. No, it's not. 
It's te teaching children how to distinguish features and similarities. Not point out differences and then start hating people. If anything, guess who is a game that brings everybody together? But yeah, it was off the market for a long time. Because people are dumb. <laughs> hey, I know people are dumb, man. It's not everything. People are just so soft these days. Everything's an issue. Everything's a problem. Like, bro, you can play Guess Who and it's not a fucking problem. It shouldn't be, yeah. Now, if you're like, put down all the blank people. Yeah, you can't play it that way. You can't say it in derogatory ways. Unless maybe that's the adult version. As long as you're not using the derog I don't know what you mean by derogatory way. Put down all the black people, it's less black people in the game. No, 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 and not black say, people. But if you use, like, the slang, negative slang, that'd be hilarious. But it would be, like, the worst game ever. And, like, I think that was the whole dynamic behind it is, like, people can yeah, use it in a nasty a way. Mess. Yeah, people can use guns in a nasty way, too. They're still everywhere. Like, come on, give me a break. Yeah, I don't know. Like, that's the reason why they got where to guess who somebody should smack, smack the shit out of the owner of Mattel. Agreed. Like, or dumb. Parker Brothers or whoever it is. Yeah, Bunch of whoever it is. butt cheese lickers. But they'll do anything to appease the masses, I guess. Yeah. Speaking of butt cheese, these kids in the hygiene, too. They actually, they called me out. I did a gross thing the other day. Have you ever seen Kingpin? The movie? The <laughs> Oh, it's such a good one. Um, anyway, there, there's a situation where the Randy Quaid is an Amish dude that is out in civilization now. And he's like flossing, and it's like the most disgusting thing ever. I had one of those. I had like a nasty floss fling to the mirror and like a wad stick on it. And I was like, oh, gross. Because <laughs> I started eating mango and... It's really Mango. stringy. So, like, the little strings will get stuck in between your teeth. And, like, I just didn't realize. I guess I had a little piece in there. And it just, like, flung out. It was super disgusting. My kids called me out on it. Like, Whatever. At least I'm flossing. As soon as your teeth get closer together, you guys are going to do the same thing. You little heathens. <laughs> yes. Flossing is, an, is a necessity. Uh, all right. Enough about my kids. How are you nice and tired now? Did daylight savings whoop your ass? Or what? It's an hour. Yeah, it's a, it's a blow. Yeah, but that should still throw you off, man, for a couple of days. I'll be all right. I'll be all right in a couple of days. I think if you just, like, are able to somehow, like, take a nap, like, whether it be daylight saving or, like, jet lag or whatever, I feel like if you could just nap in the middle of the day, that completely resets your clock no matter what because it's, like, you're not normally taking naps in the middle of the day, so if you do anyway, you're kind of just like, okay, it's a new weird thing, and then you can just acclimate accordingly. But if you can't take a nap at work, then that's kind of a bummer. I mean, I probably could take a nap at work. We got kind of our nap room, but... Oh, nice. You just got to do it however you got to do it. I realized when I went to reset all the clocks that all the clocks in my house were different. It was like <laughs> the cable box... The oven, the microwave, and my phone all had different times on them. And then the clock on the wall has hands, so God only knows what that said. Every clock in my house at the same time because it's set off the same shit. It's automatic set. There's not a, I don't have any, you know except for my microwave clock, and that's set off at the time on my phone. Cause I'm what on about my your phone. oven? Same thing. It's set off at the time on my phone, so all matches. Wow, look at you, high tech. I have to go and do the buttons thing. Beep, beep, beep. Change the button every time. It resets. Mm. It's all hardwired to the house. There you go, man. I had a... Uh, only one that has to do is reset my car, and I don't change it. I just let it catch up on its own. So I'll just be an hour behind or hour ahead until it's time for it. <laughs> you know what's so funny is we've had the same... I We got this... I got this clock as some present or some some shit we've had for a very long time and so it's one that we put on the wall it has the hands and the roman numerals like you actually have to tell time on that thing and i used to just leave it up on the wall and not change it and it would drive my mom bananas when she came over <laughs> so that's the reason why i never changed it for years i would just like 
leave it be in case my mom came by in the time where it was off an hour and she would be super upset. It would just give me a little bit of joy. <laughs> just because it's like, it's not your house. Why do you care so much? I'm going to leave it. It's just so funny. Like the things that it's just like that irk people and kind of like, oh, that's a good feeling. <laughs> I hate that. That's a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> that you like the I do like it. I'm just like, remember when it was your house, your rules? Now it's my house, my rules. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, well, I said, now it's my house, my rules. And you can't do nothing about it. It's just funny. It's not like I really care that much. It was something that I was like, oh, yeah, I should do that. And she pointed it out. And I was like, now I'm never going to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what else I never thought would ever come to life? I just saw this. There's Funyun chips. Do you know about these, Mike? Yes. What's up with They're that? Disgusting. Well, you don't like Funyuns in the first place, though, right? No, I love Funyuns in the first place. Oh, I okay. I don't like the Funyun chips because they don't really taste like Funyuns. So you've tried them. Right. And the verdict yeah, is like garbage. Are... Yeah. But the Dorito chips are pretty fire. Like, they got multiple, like, mixes that they crossed over, so... I just, the thing about Funyuns was they're in the shape of an onion ring. And then you're converting yeah, them they, to chips, and then it's like, well, those are just onion chips. Stop it. That's what they taste like, onion chips. They didn't bring over all the Funyun flavor. That's and you I'm can't, saying. because it's an end of, it's the way that they fry those silly little things. So, yeah, I don't really care for this. That's all right. We just oh, talked man. about why you're lagging behind. Have you all, okay, so speaking of bad branding... Have you seen this new Starry soda? I'm sure because it's all over the NBA commercials. Starry lemon lime soda. Have you seen this? Oh, I've seen, I've seen the commercial. That's garbage, dude. You can't just show up, jack other people's colors, and then like act like you've been there the whole time or that like, you belong. Yeah, that's exactly what they're going to do. That's, that's what they're trying to do. do going to be perfectly fine until Sprite gets tired and sues them. Well, I don't think they can because they're, you know. Don't, don't worry. They'll find a way. Nike's suing like three different people right now. Nike's always suing the people. Check. That part the check doesn't. isn't the check, but they're going to find a way to sue them anyway. And if you, even if they don't win, they don't care. They're going to make you waste hundreds of thousands of dollars of your new startup company, which they don't care about because their lawyers are retainer and they're already getting paid anyway so you're still gonna lose yeah nike's the type of company that will lose money just to make sure that they don't have competition in five years yeah like yo i'm gonna drain you out of so much money now that you're not even gonna be able to hold up your company even if you win this lawsuit or you don't lose this lawsuit because you can't win shit yeah because the only thing that they're (laughs) the only thing the especially like a Nike type company, but companies those size, the only thing that, that's happening in those meetings is like, okay, how long is it going to take us to recruit, recoup this loss? And then they just factor that into the their overall budgets. They're just like, yeah, this is a deficit we're going to have for seven mm-hmm. years. And then in seven years, it'll be gone. And so will that company, that company will be gone in six months. No worries. It's worth it. It's just the longevity of the debt. That's all they give a shit about. That's it, man. There's nothing to that. That's what I tell people all the time now when I get into shit. You care about this more than me because my lawyer is free. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches. All right, Starry Lemon Lime Soda. What were your what were your knockoff brands that you drank back in the day? Knockoff brands that I drank back in the day. Name brands were the knockoffs. Do you forget that I'm a project kid who lived off food stamps for the first half of his life? Yeah. I think I had name brand at home. No, that's why no. I'm asking. What were you drinking, you son of a bitch? We weren't drinking shit, but whatever the state gave us that 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 came like certain food came to us, like peanut butter came with a can, a state can, like a fucking can. It's yeah, but you also got Easy. you also got food stamps that were like you got a certain amount of money that didn't have qualifying like oh, you didn't have to wick it. Uh, you got like twenty bucks at the store oh, for kind of whatever. And it included no, beverages yeah. and food. Yeah. No, like other kind so of was, crap, but soda I didn't was included. Start eating name brand until I was making my own money. My mom wasn't buying name. Brand. Oh, well, you know, Mary's. I mean, Mary's is the is the name of the store and the brand. They sold their own exactly. Shit, so I guess that was 
There you go. Name brand. So if you sense. drink any soda besides a name brand, that's all I'm asking for. I don't remember what the name of the soda was that back then, but no, I'm, I mean, for soda, hmm, were we drinking a lot of sodas? More of Kool-Aid. Did you have like RC like Cola? That shit was named. Oh, we did used to buy the non-name brand pop tarts like Toasties. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we used to get hey, cereal yo. in a three-pound bag. <laughs> yeah, we had that too. We had that. Too. Damn, now you make me realize like how broke I really was, man. Now I don't buy shit that ain't name brand for the most part. I'm be honest with you, bro. Like, I'm that guy. No Shasta sodas for you? Hell no. No Shasta, but I've had Shasta in my life. No disrespect to Shasta. All right. But ain't no Because that's what I was drinking back in the day. It was like if even, we got some soda, it was Shasta. Eat hunts. I don't eat Hunts. I don't want nothing but fucking Heinz. When it comes to jelly, if it ain't Welch's, you can keep it or Smucker's. I'll take some Smucker's on a depending on the day. Definitely if it's strawberry, I'll eat that. But if it ain't name brand, I don't fucking want it now. Like everything in my house is name brand, bro. Do you fuck with chunky is, peanut butter it. ever? Yeah, but Skippy. Okay. Yeah, the shit Do you, with the nuts okay, so then the I got a buddy that his uh, like I'm gonna try it soon is his like go to midnight snack type deal or whatever is chunky peanut butter and jelly sandwich with like fresh cut up fruit like strawberries and strawberry jelly. Like, damn, that actually sounds pretty delightful. But I would drink it with a glass of milk, not orange juice like you, you psychopath. <laughs> Do you just use orange yeah. juice because the acid is what gets the stuff out of your mouth? Like to wash no. it down? No, orange juice is just a breakfast juice, so let's keep it breakfast. Like, I mean, champagne before when I really wanted some cereal. Don't matter. Just need to throw some liquid in there, man. In the project growing up, I was using water. Before. Water, yeah. Or yeah. Whatever. The other thing was like <laughs> get it, get the cereal in a cup, and just like eat all the cereal, and then just chug like a little bit of milk, and be like, "There was breakfast." Bing, bang, boom. But you don't drink milk because you're a weirdo with a bad no stomach. Milk. All right. Enough of that bullshit. Let's jump into sports. It's going to be a little bit. So, <laughs> did you see the bad strikeout that I sent you? The what? The bad strikeout where the ump called. Did you watch that video that I sent you? The ump called the like ump called. a one and one strike that was like almost hit the plate in this college baseball game. So, strike two, like almost hits the plate. And the batter kind of freaks out a little bit and is like, dude, what? No. He's like, fine, I think whatever. Those are plants. I think those are plants. I think all those, because I've had, I've seen a couple like completely horrible calls over the last, I want to say 30 days. And I think they're plants. Really? That's my, that's my, that's my final verdict is that they're plants so that the MLB can eventually move to the bullshit as the thing they're trying to move the to. The robot like it's like, things. The, yeah, the electronic strike zone or whatever the case may be. Mm, like they want to take human error out of everything. Like we grew up on human error. Like these sports. Have but this human wasn't error. a human error because strike no. three was about two feet outside, and the ump immediately called the strike and started beelining it to the dugout. Like he was leaving no matter where that pitch went. That's not human error. That was just this ump is done and didn't want to be a part of this game anymore. So I get what you're saying, but this was a particularly egregious. Yeah, like that guy should be fired. Egregious on purpose, because if someone with that much power can do that, then you know. Well, but now you're unfolding this conspiracy theory that you think this college umpire did this on purpose. Yep, same thing with Lamar. Everybody talking about Lamar. This and all that. Lamar is getting railroaded, people. Just for the record. All right, I'm sorry I went off subject, but yeah. Let's... No, that's okay. We can jump right into Lamar. We we're going to jump into the NFL anyway. I was going to leave him well, for no, the end, just, but... It was just like a cahoots thing. You know, it went from one cahoots to the other side of the phone. You know, explain all these theories together. You know what I mean? Because like, this definitely owners working in cahoots to not have Lamar. But it's not a Lamar thing. I want everyone to believe it's a Lamar thing. It's a quarterback thing. The quarterback numbers were getting fucking outrageous. So it's time to put a cap on it. And that's what they're in the process of trying to do right now. We got to slow this 
Because if you don't slow it down, in two years, somebody's going to be getting paid like $60 million a year. Like, you can't let it. You can't let it bubble. Like, they have to slow it down at some point. And here, Lamar gave him a perfect opportunity. Because you think somebody's paying you $230 million guaranteed when you run as much as you do, uh, you're high. Sorry, Lamar. Well, the other part, too, that I wonder if he would be in this situation still is he's representing himself. He doesn't have an agent. So, yeah, he doesn't, which he can't get those backdoor conversations done and he can't get into certain rooms. Exactly. But he doesn't need an agent. And technically speaking, when you're good in the NFL, you shouldn't need an agent. Someone signs, you sign the next contract yeah, exactly. a little bit it's, more. It's, 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 you it's just, tweak, you just tweak the amount of guaranteed, the amount of years, and you know all of your incentive bonuses. Like It's all just which tweaked. Which is why Russell and Kyler were able to get their done last year. And it's also why they were able to rob their franchises out of all the money that they robbed them out of. Like, oh, that looks like a pretty good contract. Can we get you to something like that? Yeah, I'll take something like that, knowing that I'm about to go ahead and stink it up anyway. So don't worry. I'll take your money and just stink it up. Guaranteed 140. Guaranteed 160. Sign me up for that all day. So bad, man. So bad. And let's cut the narrative of people like, oh, Lamar did this. I mean, Kyler did this. Russell did this. If Lamar wanted Russell and Kyler money, he could have had it already. So let's just stop it, people. This is not a we can't. It's not a comparison. Lamar wants to reset the market. He wants to create his own precedent, and they're not going to allow him. Yeah, he has to understand that this Deshaun uh, Deshaun Watson deal was a one in a lifetime deal because he which was they've a, already a, reworked, by the way. Yes, but it's also because he was a free agent. So when he was a free agent, yeah. he had teams bidding for him. Yeah. There was no trade compensation involved, and they understood he was in the court and he needed to have money worked a certain way because he was going to need money to deal with what he was dealing with, kind of like the old Kobe contract when he re-signed with the Lakers. Everybody's contract that came after Kobe wasn't like that. It was just Kobe's. No one's getting 80% of their money up front. Kobe did. You know what I mean? Like, or 50%. I don't think it was 80. That was high enough. Yeah. But like, no one's getting 50. Everyone did, gets their yearly annual. Kobe got 50% of his deal up front because he had to pay off 8 million because he was dealing with something. So, situations create situation in which shit works differently. But Lamar, to think he's going to, he, you're not getting Deshaun. Deshaun happened to fall into a perfect situation and the one team bid crazy. Cool. But don't think everybody's doing that shit. As much as I like Lamar, it ain't going to happen, buddy. Unless Atlanta jumps out the window. What's in mind? No, I don't think so, man. They just signed some crap bag. Well, they have plenty of money to afford to 45. It's just a matter of they want to do it. No, I know, but they just signed some mediocre quarterback to a two-year deal. Yeah, he's a backup. Um, I know who you're talking about, but he, I mean, if you get Lamar, you get, if you want Lamar, you go get Lamar. But I just don't. Only team that I'm say made it dumb is Carolina. Carolina, you're fucking fool. If you're gonna give up two and three first, you should have went and got Lamar. I know you might not want to pay him the money because the rookie money is way cheaper than Lamar money, but you would have kept your receiver. You would have kept some of the extra stuff that you gave away because all you had to do is give up two first. You gave up three first in this deal for an unproven guy. If you want to win, you go get Lamar. Like, <laughs> sorry to tell you. Yeah, and I'm going to circle back on this Lamar Houston Texans thing. The Houston Texans have two first-round picks in the top 15. They can trade a first-round number 12 pick, still keep the first-round number two pick this year, and then trade away next year's number one, and they can have Lamar Jackson. They could also sign Ezekiel Elliott as of, like, an hour from now when we're recording (laughs) because Zeke ain't going to be playing for the Cowboys anymore. (laughs) They already have Damian Pierce. Why would they want to sign Ezekiel Elliott? That's first. Second of all, they're a lot further away than the Carolina Panthers is. That's why the Carolina quarterback thing is such a big deal. Because Carolina's defense is ready made to go be a playoff team. If they can get a quarterback and maybe one more receiver, the offensive line is pretty good because they've been drafted there the last couple years. They've always run the ball well. That's why Carolina is such a big deal. Because they're a quarterback away from at least a playoff team. Not going to be a Super Bowl team. But a healthy defense and a quarterback and they're a playoff team. In that yeah, game. but the Texans are going to be the not. closest team to being able to afford Lamar. Like, it's it's the you closest think? to the tipping point 
of making sense. Well, them in Atlanta, Atlanta, them in Atlanta have the money. Washington can make the money, yeah. and the Jets can make the money from from the reports I would read. That's about it. Heineke. I'm gonna tell you who should the, the Falcons signed gonna, Heineke. Taylor Heineke. That's what I'm it was. Tell you who should go get him. They should figure out if the Ravens are interested in Tannehill, and Titans should trade for Lamar. That wouldn't be bad. Oh my God, Lamar and Derrick Henry. <laughs> exactly. Oh. They're already pretty much a running team. And the defense is what you do ahead. anyway. So that would yeah. be the. It would basically be Baltimore 2.0. Just they're that's, paying. That's what they are now. Yeah, they pay him. <laughs> that's it. With a better running game. Although exactly. Dobbins is pretty versatile. Yeah. All right, so let, that's Lamar. That's Lamar. Austin Eckler requested a trade and can now seek out a trade from the Chargers. So he knows it's not going well over there. Well, he knows he's not going to get paid. Yeah. And these running backs are just expecting. Look, let me, let me just say this. This is my speech to running back. 10, 11 million is, is it for you all. That's it. And it's not going up from there. And the only reason why it's 11 million now is because when that was agreed to, Zeke was still under contract because that number is going to consistently drop moving forward because they don't they don't think y'all are worth it anymore. They just don't think you're worth having. They think they can like, we'll draft you, play you for your four years, and we'll let you go and draft somebody else, third, fourth, fifth round. They don't care anymore. Yeah. Running backs are just not interchangeable. That important running back. backs are way more interchangeable than they used to be. They used to be like, running backs now are like your slot receiver used to be. Now your slot receiver is everything, and your running back is like, we just need somebody to just get us three to four yards every now and again. That's all we need. Even the dominant workhorse, Henry's on the trade block. Like, there's nothing yeah. that can stop you from being traded or making these people want to pay you at least $15 million a year. Well, here's... You know whose fault that is? Who's? Ezekiel Elliott. So you can have him... Bob Bacha his man. You know why? Because he's the last one to sign a big deal. And guess what he did? Ever since that big deal, he signed. Stunk it up. Down, 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 down. Stinky, 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 stinky. <laughs> running backs just aren't worth it. They just aren't. Well, speaking of running backs, stinky, Miami stinky, 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 stinky. did. Yeah. Miami signed Mostert and Jeff Williams Jr. Both. They re-signed them both to like seven and eight year uh, million dollar deals respectively. I, I'm like. That's the way to do it. Have two above average backs that if one of them goes down, it doesn't matter because the other one's serviceable exactly the same way. And if they're both if they're both running well, you saw how Miami did. They had three running backs last year that were interchangeable. And their offense was always moving. And they're probably on one year deals because guess what Miami's going to do in either the third, fourth, or fifth round this year? Draft the running back. <laughs> they also <laughs> traded for Jalen Ramsey. Which is amazing. That defensive, that team, if two is any good. Because they dropped, I forgot uh, which cornerback they dropped, but then it's like they pick up Jalen Ramsey. He's like, oh, so the, I thought you couldn't get better, but then you did. <laughs> yeah, they, they had Byron Jones. He didn't play all last year, and he quit, and he put a tweet out that says, this game is not worth the damage it does. Oh, to okay. He said he can't even, he he can't even run or jump right now. Like, he can't run or jump, That's but it. he's worth millions. Shit. Good for him. I don't know. Action kids. <laughs> action kids about the give and take of it all. Would they prefer daddy to be able to run and jump and be living in the, in the projects? <laughs> are they okay with living in the mansion there and if they could just jump on daddy's lap? I don't know what they would choose, but Axel. <laughs> all right. Before we get into your boys, um, how do you feel about the Jets and Aaron Rodgers? By the time this comes out, it's basically going to be going down. I like the fact that the Jets started signing people on Rodgers' wish list before they signed him. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see if it actually gets done. Because here's the thing. It would yes, be hilarious if it didn't. Him. Well, Green Bay wants him gone. Per today, he's supposed to go on the McAfee show. I'm pretty sure he's going to go in there and say he wants to go to the Jets. He already did. Right before we started recording was when it just like was live coming out. That he's okay. like, I do want to be on the Jets. It's just a matter of them working out compensation. There's the problem. Exactly. Because now, now the Packers back. could be no. assholes about it. <laughs> yeah, they know. They know you want to be on the Jets. They know the Jets are signing players that you told them to sign. So they know y'all have been working together behind closed doors. 
if they decide to wake up and say, okay, well, we're just going to be assholes about this and we're going to make you pay us a king's ransom for him since we know y'all already been working together. Yep. Oh, okay. Like at first people were talking, oh, number 13 wasn't going to be a part of this deal. Number 13 is for sure on the table now just because of you all coming out and making this shit so obvious. Like 13, if he was negotiating with multiple teams, uh, they might be a little bit more lenient. You want to go there? Okay, so they're going to pay for you now. And so a story I was reading, they want the Stafford type package. Well, <laughs> the Rams paid for Stafford. Oh, yeah. That wasn't a giveaway pick. Like, they paid for Stafford. Are the Jets willing to compensate to that level? And here's the thing. Before Aaron Rodgers went into his hideout, he was, like, pretty sure he was going to retire. Like, this is a year-to-year thing with this guy who just kind of is floating through life at this point going, like, I get to do whatever I want. Maybe I just don't feel like going to work tomorrow. And then he just is no longer a football player. Like, you have to balance all of this in there. And mind you, they're the Jets. They're going to figure out a way to fuck this up. It's going to be great. And he's going to rub them young. Those are young kids he's going to be dealing with. He rubbed those young kids the wrong way. And that offense. He's already rubbing them the wrong way. They got three up and coming receivers who are like putting it on there. And last year with a shit quarterback situation. And he's like, oh, by the way, I need all of them replaced. I don't think that's a good way to start coming in. I'm going to sign Alan Lazard, who sucks and can't catch a cold in Green Bay. Well, Alan Lazard can play. I don't know if I can play with the other two, but those other two dudes he wants, like Randall Cobb, Cobb, he's not going to play because they have the number eight guy in the slot, and then they have the guy from Ohio State on the outside. Yeah, they have Garrett Wilson and what's his name? Yeah. Garrett Wilson and the guy that they was going to cut last year, though, but he actually played decent, so they'll probably keep him to play the slot. Corey Davis? I can't. No, no, not Corey Davis. Corey Davis is gone. Corey Davis is the one. No, I'm. No. My brain's farting. You know, he was still there last year, but he was. But I can't think of his name. He was like a Mississippi guy, number eight, and they were going to get rid of him. He's a smaller guy. He's probably a slot guy, but he'll yeah. play slot. Lazard will play outside. But, yeah, Corey Davis and his $12 million, he's going to be gone. And um, and there's, there's no point of signing, unless you're going to play him as a – Cobb can play the fourth receiver. And then he wants Mercedes team. Lewis still as tight end. Like, get somebody huh. younger, bro. I mean, he can take Mercedes Lewis. They don't have no tight end. And, I mean, he can be a blocker. Mercedes Lewis is a blocking tight end now. You can play. You can pay him two million to be a blocking tight end. Whatever. Yeah, that's true. If he's just going to block, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, it, it makes it comfortable for him in the transition. So I get that. But the Randall Cobb move is the one that I don't understand. Lazard move. He just wants to get his buddies him. paid, which that's great. Aaron Rodgers is a good friend, but you know. You're, yeah, Cobb is already under contract, so you don't need to get him paid. He's getting paid in Green Bay. Leave him in Green Bay. He wants he somebody wants to go to dinner crazy. with. That's all he yeah, cares about. That's, that's all he cares about. He wants his friends. Yo, oh, that team can, Which, okay. Aaron Rodgers any good, they're going to be pretty good. Okay, so how about this? Yeah, because their defense was stout last year. Towards the, but the until offense the literally end. has weapons. They have two offensive linemen that should be back from injury, so that, that should get better. They have Brees Hall coming back from injury, who was, should have been off as a rookie of the year, baiting, barring his injury. And then that receiving core, adding Alan Lazar with Aaron Rodgers at the trigger, like they should be hella good come next year if all this comes together, barring injuries. I just really hope Green Bay just, like at the last minute, is like, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> like, let them sign everybody and then just at the last minute be like, you know what? No. Nah. You want to retire? Go ahead. Because you're going to sit the bench for us. We're starting Jordan and we're not going to trade you. So, what are you going to do, Aaron? <laughs> yeah. What's better for your brand? Being a loser on the bench? <laughs> yeah, I'm down with that. Okay. So, the Raiders are doing Raiders things. They signed Jimmy G and Jacoby Myers like not soon after they trade Darren Waller for a third round pick. Like how if you're gonna sign Jimmy G, why would you trade away one of the better weapons on your team? They added a weapon, they added Jacoby Meyer. Yeah, but the tight end position, like Darren Waller is a top tier tight end. And had they gotten something better than a third round pick? Is okay. Is he is he top tier? He's a good when he's on the field. Can he stay on the field? Well, that's the thing. Exactly. If you're bringing he's in somebody like Jimmy G, why are you taking away somebody who you know is an offensive weapon? Because you can add a tight end, a dynamic tight end in the draft. You're paying him a lot of money to not be healthy. 
I'm I'm okay with the trade. I'm okay with it. Get rid of him. He's not going to play. If he's not going to stay healthy, I don't want him on my team. And I do like that. Years, that they uh, the Giants signed him thinking that he's going to be the <laughs> the outlet the for NFL Daniel NFL. Jones, and that's not going to be the case. Yeah, and then he ends up getting hurt, and man, because he gets hurt often. Like, yeah, he Waller does. is dynamic, but he gets hurt a lot. They draft, they say they draft that dude. Uh, what's the guy? Dalton, whatever his name is, or they sign Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz is a pretty good tight end. He runs a four or five. Not no slouch. Or they sign the Dalton Kincaid dude. They draft Dalton Kincaid, who's a pretty dynamic pass catcher. I don't trust it. It's just the Raiders. They're going to continue to suck. Good for them. I mean, Josh McDaniels' offense is going. If they can put I think they're going to be they, good, but I don't think they're going to be better than the Chiefs. No one does. They think, might not even be better than the Chargers. So what does this all matter? They're going to be the Raiders again. The whole division can make the playoffs if you all play well enough. You really not the Broncos. It's seven spots now. The Broncos are probably going to be the second best team in that division, buddy. You think so? Mm-hmm. I mean, they did make some decent signings. They got a good coach. They made offensive line signings, and if Russ doesn't work out, he's going to get benched for Stidham. Hear me here first, and it's not going to be a long leash because your boy Garrett, I mean, your boy, he, he's from the Dallas tree. He ain't playing. Sean Payton ain't playing none of that foolishness. Come out here. You can't play. You will not play, period. Can't play, won't play. That's it. That's and then who they sign? I forget. It was the offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator. Um, the defensive coordinator. Oh, they sign. Um, their defensive coordinator is uh, Nick Fangio. Nick Fangio. There you go. There you go. I was like, they got a solid coaching staff over there. Yeah. But the big problem is Russell Wilson. If they can get him out of there, then I think they'll be okay. I believe Russ can be functional if they can run the ball. They couldn't run the ball last year because their running back got hurt in week one. <laughs> I mean, like. And their line was not as good. They upgraded the line. Their running back should be back. If they can run the ball and let Russ play all play action, then that whole Russ Cook thing is not real. That's a, that's a make-believe in people's world when things started going bad. They were like, oh, well, let's do the opposite and let him throw all the time. No, the running game just isn't working right now, but don't go that other route because he's not built for that. Yeah. But he's built to be a play action guy. If play action works, he can throw the deep ball. He can throw the moon shot. And he can hit crossing routes at a pretty consistent basis, which is good for the RPO game. And he needs to run more. Russ needs to get back into his running I don't think he can anymore. If the running game is – at the end of the season, he was doing better. Like the game versus the Chiefs, if you watch the game – That's because he was playing for his job at the end of the season. Well, then every game needs to be like he's playing for his job. Because he is. Yeah, but he needs to incorporate the running part into his – into his game, and they need to get their running back game back together because their defense is going to be back to being good, and it should be pretty close to lights out. Right. And they can get some scoring and don't have to play as much, they would be so much better. Like a tired defense is easy to get get their head on. But if they weren't so tired, weren't out there as much, they, they would be a lot better. So do you but think – you all got the skill of the, of the free agency so far, and I don't even see your name on this list. You literally have the best pick up of free agency so far, in my opinion. Which is? And it, and it was the first one. Hargrave is really fucking good, bro. Like, I don't understand why people don't understand how good he is. He's really, really good. I don't know if people understand that, of how good that Hargrave is in the middle of your defensive line. Like, he is really good. And on that defensive line, oh, my goodness. I, like, I don't even want to see it. I don't even want to play against you all. I don't want no problems with that. Him both like what? What? If he gets pressure and dominates from the tackle position, put him yeah. next to Bosa and then next to Armstead. Oh my goodness, bro! Like I don't even. I fear for your division. That de- healthy. That de- well, that um, and Fred Warner just reworked his contract with the Niners to make more cap space. So I'm like, oh, good. He he wants he wants to be the captain of the best fucking defense in the league. That's what he's showing, and I love that because that means he's not going to leave. <laughs> if he's restructuring to stay, that means he wants to be here for the long haul. So put him yeah, in Greenlaw, so just in the middle of the field, making chaos. I'll, I'll take it all yeah, day. We, yeah, replace Jimmy Wall, but adding Hargrave is likely replacing Jimmy Wall because you're going to have about three seconds to throw. 
Like, hell well, that's the thing. That D line, it makes up for our secondary not being great. Is they don't have to be hanging out there for very long. That's they don't. That's why our secondary doesn't have to be as good as let's say like the Eagles or something like that. Is because yeah, you people know. talk about that pass Dak missed in the playoffs. He mixed T Y on the back end on the back because he didn't have time to look backside. Because you don't have time with that yeah. D line, and they added one of the best defensive tackles. He's top five to me easily. In, in the league, especially off of his season last year. What? Yeah, that was the first move, and they, they must have identified him real early in the process because literally that was the first move announced that I heard. But I wanted us to get him because we need a D tackle, and he's the best. That was well, you did get go. Stephon Gilmore. That's a big upgrade oh, for you it. guys. I yeah, I love the Stephon Gilmore pick, and it's exactly what we need because we need an outside corner. He fits perfectly. We should have got him two years ago when we were trying to bend, but I'll take him now. Dude, Hope that, shape yeah, I was. I'm. You're the opposite of us. Like we both have solid. I mean, you guys re-signed Van Der Esch, which good for you guys. Who cares? But you guys have <laughs> solid linebackers and secondary. But I'm not too worried about your D line. And then we're the opposite. Our secondary is weak. But the closer you get to the ball, the tougher we get. Yeah, I just need. I need. I'm okay with my ends. I need some tackle. I need. You a need tackle. somebody up the middle. I need, tackle, <laughs> I need a tackle. You can't play Michael. You can't have Michael Rush on the up the middle. He's an outside guy, even though we did some at times last season. But and but especially after Dorrance Armstrong went down, we really had to play him on the edge. But if I can get someone to give me pressure up the middle, someone, anyone, any of you five defensive tackles that we play, one of you, one of you step up to the plate. <laughs> one of you. All right. Enough football talk. We're going to try and barrel through this March Madness pick em here. So what I got is I got your pick em sheet and mine. I'm not going to bother going through all the rounds. That's silly. But I will go to, um, why don't we say the Elite Eight. Okay, so we'll start um, in the south. We both have Alabama. In the mm-hmm. Elite Eight. Oh, that's the Elite Eight. Yeah. Yeah. So and we'll just, many- instead of go, to, we'll just start from here. So Elite Eight, we both have Alabama in the South. We also, you have Arizona and I have Baylor going against Alabama. Mm-hmm. In the East, you have Purdue. I took Tennessee beating Purdue. And you have Marquette. Over Kansas State, and I have Kansas State over Marquette. So we both have the same Sweet 16. We just have both different winners in the South. Uh, in the Midwest, ooh, you took Indiana. I took Houston. And you took Texas. I have Penn State going far to the Elite Eight. Really, we know who's going to win this bracket. <laughs> uh, in the West, let's see. You have UConn. I have Kansas. You have UCLA. I have Gonzaga. All right. So, for Alabama, Arizona, you took Arizona going to the Final Four. Confident with that pick, or is that one that you're not so sure about? No, I think I picked the winner all. I think Arizona's the winner all. Okay. Uh, I took Baylor defeating Alabama. I have Baylor going to the Final Four. Now, you have Purdue versus Marquette. You have Marquette advancing to the Final Four. I have Tennessee going to the Final Four over Kansas State. In the Midwest, you have... Texas over Indiana. Texas going to the Final Four. I have Houston over Penn State. Houston in the Final Four. In the West, you have UConn beating UCLA. UConn going to the Final Four. I have Kansas beating Gonzaga going to the Final Four. So Mike's Final Four looks... Let's see. I don't think we have one team the same. (laughs) We don't. (laughs) We are polar opposites. So Mike has... Arizona beating Marquette, 
Texas beating UConn, Arizona being the champ in a very high-scoring game. I have Tennessee beating Baylor going to the title game this year. Do you know who Tennessee's coach is? I don't know. Yeah, that's why you picked them. You, you Fine. Know who I'm going off their play. Piss off. Um, I have Houston beating Kansas in the Final Four. Houston being the champion in a mid-scoring game, 68-64. So I have Houston winning the whole thing. Two weeks ago, that was my picks before Marcus Sasser got hurt. Okay. Growing injuries don't heal that quickly. I don't trust it. And you know Mark Barnes coaches Tennessee. I mean, he, you know Coach Barnes coaches Tennessee, right? I don't know why he that's never so bad. He never wins in the tournament. He, he literally folds in the tournament. When he was at Texas, Kevin Durant, all those guys fold in the tournament. They literally had Kevin Durant, P.J. Tucker, and T.J. Ford on the same team, and he couldn't win the tournament. What the hell? I Are don't you, know. Coach Barnes is so bad. Even though he wins a lot of regular season games, in that tournament, he does it like he holds. Even though I like Texas, a lot, I like Tennessee a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm not expecting them to win it all. I'm expecting them to almost win it all and then for him to fail again. I expect him to go out in the first round. Okay. Well, that would be That's a bummer for my man. bracket. <laughs> I only did one. I'm not like these... <laughs> I think it's just ridiculous, people that do, like, 17 brackets. Like, why? I, I think it should you should limit your brackets to the amount of fantasy football teams you have. should be three or less. Oh, I have, like, five. I mean, like, five. You know, fantasy football cost me about $600 last year. Like, I'm in a million. That's because you football. lose. Oh, that's because I like to win money. The chance of winning. Okay, money. so if you're at negative 600 after last season fantasy football. I'm not. I'm not negative 600. I'm only negative... Well, actually, I won, like, side bets from, like, two of them. No, no, no. From the leagues you signed up for, not no side bets. For the leagues you I mean, paid I'm money to get league. into, how much did you get paid out? What's the balance? What do you mean? I got paid, so I'm... Okay, I so if you paid 600 in fees, how much did yeah. you... If you won 400, then you'd still cost you 200 bucks to play last year. That's what I'm asking. I did. I only won... I won 200 bucks. So it cost you 400 bucks to play fantasy football last year. Yeah. You stink. I won two. I won two fifty dollar bets head to head games versus people in those leagues. Then I won hundred dollars back for being uh, winning the division. So then you only won a hundred bucks. It what cost you, you. Well, because the side bets, I don't count those. Oh, I mean, sure. I'm just I talking like fees versus payouts. Oh, well, then I would pay five. Then you're down five hundred. Then I won a hundred and one side bets head to head game. Oh, yeah. That's tough, man. Right. Don't worry. Then, yeah, I won 1200 off of Fantasy, so it gives it a take here to year. Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you have Arizona winning in all your brackets? How many brackets do you have? No, right now I have three brackets. Only two of them are in paid, and I have Arizona winning in one, Texas in the other. Okay, that's fair. I can see I now... Like I don't believe that it's just too much stuff going around with the whole Brandon Miller thing and that I believe that they're going to find a way to hate on us. Yeah, that's fair. All right, let's move into what we're watching these days. Mike, are you just watching Ball all day long in Blacklist? Is that pretty much it? I haven't even seen the last two episodes. No, last two episodes of Blacklist. But yes, I'm watching Blacklist. Watching a lot of sports. Um, anything new on Netflix that I'm watching? I'm trying to think. Cause I'm not at home. Usually, I can just pop on the TV and look and <laughs> see. I can't do that because I'm at, I'm not recording from the crib. Um, I can't. I need to watch you people, and I did see Creed three. So. Oh, okay. Did you go to the theater? Yeah. Look First at time in the theater, maybe like ten years. I know that's why I'm like kind of a little shocked right now. Do you want to hear something silly? Yeah. I went to see Creed three by myself in the movie theater. I did. Mm-hmm. I saw it What's as well. Big? I actually <laughs> this is gonna sound weird, but I didn't end up seeing it alone. I went to the local movie theater. It was raining. Whatever. It was like a matinee Saturday. Some bullshit. So I go get my ticket. I go to walk in. There's these 
nice older black ladies like walking ahead of me a couple of steps. And they're like, one of them turns to me. She's like, you here by yourself? And I was like, yeah. She's like, what are you going to see? Like, I'm here to see Creed. She's like, you're going to come sit with us. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I kind of got demanded to come sit with these two older ladies. That, so she's like, you seen the other ones? And I'm like, well, me and movies, like, I fall asleep a lot. So I've kind of seen it, basically, but not all in one sitting. She's like, oh, okay. I just came here for the muscles. I don't get out much. She dragged me out. Misty and Pansy. I go to the movies with Misty and Pansy. They're like, okay, you come sit with us. I'm like, all right, uh, where are your seats? Because I just bought my ticket up at the concession stand. So you pick your own seat, whatever. There was a bunch of empty seats in this theater. It was Nobody was seeing this thing. So we were like, go to go to their seats. And she's like, oh, you got these too close? Like, they're bickering back and forth. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. What have, I, what have I agreed to here? I was like, well, actually, mine's like back here, row H, like almost in the middle. And there's nobody on either side of me for a few seats. Because I just picked this right before the movie started. So they end up sitting next to me. And we just watched Creed 3 together. It was kind of odd. And it was like the movie was over. It was like, okay, that was good. Nice. And they're like, okay, we're going to the bathroom. I'm like, all right, see you later. Bye. Just like beelined it out. I'm like, I don't know how to end this transaction, the single serving relationship we just had in this movie theater. It was so weird. But all that to be said, what'd you think of it? Uh, I think it, I don't know. I think it was good action. I think it was directed and produced well, I guess. Storyline, kind of weak. Um, but overall, decent movie. And he actually had to learn the box to do it. It wasn't like one of those stand-ins or something. Like, you know, like bullshit. Like, he was actually out there throwing those punches. Did I you see the movie. other Creeds? Didn't see two, saw one. Okay. That was kind of me. Like, I saw one, basically, I saw three quarters of it. And then started like halfway through a different time and then finished it. So I saw it the first one that way. And then Creed 2, I think I've just seen like five minutes here, ten minutes there, like on TV. I haven't watched it really. But I kind of felt the same thing. Like, it was good. It was well done. Um, I mean, the, it's not that hard to like string together a, pro, a plot line. But man... Like, I don't know how much Michael B. Jordan wrote in this or whatever, but it just feels like, I know he directed, produced, like, he, killer job on all this stuff. But whoever did the writing, like, it was just so out of order and out of place. It's like, had had this guy said anything or just been like, hey, man, sorry, it's like, Creed walks around so confused about what's going on and all he has to do is ask somebody a direct question that he asks 30 minutes later in the movie you're like had you asked that three scenes ago you didn't even need that part in the movie to add extra elements of like oh, what happened oh let's go back you didn't need all that crap you could have just left it as like like they threw in a couple of red herring things like oh you know i you know, you never talk to me. Like, this isn't a big thing. But, oh, you never talk to me. And it's like, at that point, he could have been like, hey, this wasn't my fault. But then it was, and then it's this, and it's that. And it's like, all the things that they tried to add the suspense to, they didn't need it. It was just, you just had a storyline, and now you just distracted us for five minutes. Instead of this being a two-hour movie, make it an hour and 40, and let's bang this Creed three out of here. You know what I mean? Had they shaved off that 20 minutes of, hey, had you said this 30 minutes ago, we didn't need this scene? Had they trimmed those things out, it would have been like, wow, it would have been so good. But that added to like, it kind of takes you out of the momentum of the movie. You're like, oh, we have to go revisit this stupid thing again? I thought, why? Come on. You were just building up yeah, to like, a thing. What? The, stop going backwards. Saying, stop going backwards. The one thing like three times. I'm like, bro. We get it. told us. What he did <laughs> yeah. before we actually saw what he did. I like, know. So you revisited this scene four times, and we still didn't see you do that until after you said it, and then there's a flashback to you doing it. That was Bro. what pissed me off, dude. That's why I'm like, oh my god, come on! Like so the three seconds in between them showing him doing it when he said it, I'm saying to myself and to the people I'm with, he didn't do that. 
Like he said he, and then yeah. they flashed him like, oh shit, okay, he does. Man. Well, here's the like, thing that really irked me was all of the in between parts. If you add those up, it would have brought them closer together instead of tear them apart. Had you just left it as what the beginning and the end was on why they didn't like each other, you could have just scooted that up and then it could have been more of them like press conferencing back and forth or something. Like you could have used the real time stuff way better instead of revisiting all this old crap that basically it's like, okay, we didn't need to know all that and it still would have had the same amount of impact. And that's the parts that I wish were cut out of the movie. But yeah, there's so much of that, the writing and shit that I didn't agree with, but decent movie. I will say that I like the way that, you know, they do the kind of the classic Rocky style. You know, they took the same thing as the way that they um, kind of go through the fight montage where it's like they show a couple of early rounds and they show a couple of mid round and you can't really tell what it is. And then the late rounds. I like the way that they did it this time. I won't give it away because it's still a pretty new movie, but the way that they did the in-between rounds was very clever. Very clever. To where it was still all the highlights, but it was just refocused. And I thought that part of the movie was extremely bitchin'. Like, I was like, oh, okay. You just won me back with this scene from all the dog shit that I had to put up with to get to this point. So, overall... I think it was an above average movie, especially for a boxing movie. So, I mean, uh, I don't know if I like it better than Creed 1. It's been, it's been, or the original Creed. It's been a while since I've seen the original Creed. But, I mean, I liked it. It was overall pretty good. I was glad I went to see it in the movie theater, which I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. But I'll definitely also rewatch it when it comes out on, like, whatever streaming service, like, I'll, I'll rewatch it then. Like, it was that good. I'll give it another go. Knowing that I can just sit through it this time and not worry about the stupid dialogue, just kind of tune in when I feel like it, you know what I mean? <laughs> A background movie, if you will. But. True. I also True. watched a, a movie that's a part of a franchise I haven't seen in a long time. I watched Jackass Forever, finally. It came out on Amazon Prime. So I fired up Jackass Forever, and boy, do those guys deliver still. They got their new recruits and their old guys doing all the same <laughs> tricks. I like that they had some throwbacks to the original, like, we tried this in the original Jackass, and then now they try it in a newer, high tech up way. It was fun. It's a, extremely just a Jackass movie. Those guys nail it every time. Good for them. So that leads me to our top five of the week, Mike. And then we're out of here. Okay, yeah, because I, I got work to do. I know right, you man. do. So let's focus Still for five. So considering the what we both watched, Creed 3, and I saw some jackass, I figure we go with our top five favorite movie franchises. And I consider a franchise is three or more in a series. I think that's the standard definition of a franchise movie franchise. Really? Yeah. Are you too distracted to go first? No, I'm just thinking. Okay. Top five, three. So Bad Boys is definitely on there because I have three. I don't really the reason why I'm thinking because I don't know if I really know a lot of movie franchises that have three. Like I don't watch Harry Potter. And shit like that. Okay, then how about this? How about the top? You give me the top five worst franchises. Oh, the number one is the Werewolf and what was that shit? Oh, Twilight. Number one. That's I a good one. Every minute of that shit. That's and awful. Seen all of them because I was with my ex at the time. Oof. And um, that's rough. She made me do all of that. Was rough. She's also a Harry Potter fan. Hey, Harry Potter. And uh, my question for you, Harry Potter fan. Is he ever going to fucking graduate? Is Harry Potter <laughs> ever going to graduate? The boy's been in school for since I was in school, and I'm out of school for 20 years now. So I'm just wanting to know, like, can he ever become a wizard? Like, is he ever just going to get his wizard powers and become a fucking wizard? All right. That's, that's number two. I don't see the point of that shit. Um, I hate to say this, 
But like after like Rocky Two, like all that oh. other shit was like, like it's like watered down, bro. Like what? Like after Rocky Two, you can keep the rest of them. Like keep keep three, four. Oh, see, Rocky's in my top five best movie franchises. If you're just going one, two, yeah. After that, you can stop stop it too. But the rest of that crap is just just crap, just filler. That's just not filler. true. That's not true at all. I would say a lot of people don't like Rocky Five. I don't remember liking Rocky Balboa that much. So I like those. You know, it kind of does tail off when you get there. But one through four, great. I mean, one through three are really fantastic. Even though I love one of the movies, like the franchise, the the franchise is not that great. The Born franchise, bro. Like I love Born Ultimatum, but everything around that is not that great. It's really not. Yeah, there's a lot of them. See, and that's the problem when you start digging into these franchises. By the way, I'm I'm throwing one on your side. Fast and Furious can suck my asshole. <laughs> they are not that good. The first one was okay. And then I think there was one in the middle somewhere that was like fun and silly. All the rest of them are garbage. My, you want to know my second favorite? What? Tokyo Drift. As bad as a movie as it is, Tokyo Drift is my second favorite rush out after the first one like that's how bad that's for me. maybe because it was and just number, a completely different thing yeah and number five i had number five but you made me think about sorry that shit and stuff like that. Oh, damn. you were talking shit about rocky yeah no number five was damn i had it on my mind too you made me forget it oh, is it star wars House party. That's what it is. Oh, house party. <laughs> house party. kid and they play. Just made a third one. They just made a third one, so it it fits. And two and three, you can keep that shit. Just give me one. Okay, I was gonna say you two. don't like any of them. No, no, I love one, but two okay. is like immature. You can keep that shit. Don't need it. Don't have it. It was funny. Ha ha. Never rewatched it. If it don't got no rewatchability, it's trash. And the new one. Oh man. Did you watch it? I've seen it on Fire Stick. It is garbage. It is, it is full of celebrity, but it's really a bad movie. How'd you feel about High School High? Never seen it. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, so I'll say I my top five, I think, best franchises. I'll go Rocky, Beverly Hills Cop, John Wick surprisingly made this list. I haven't seen it. It's good. I did not, like, when all this came out, originally John Wick and Keanu Reeves and everybody's making fun of him for, like, blah, blah, what is he thinking and what is he doing? He's doing all his own stunts. They're coming out with a new one, and I'm genuinely excited to go see it. Like, a crazy action movie. I haven't been excited to see this since, like, Last Action Hero. I'm like, okay, John Wick, I am on board. So that's why, and I'm trying not to do the thing where I'm an old fogey and like no nothing new can be on a, a top list. That mm-hmm. being said, I'm reverting to the Batman Begins franchise. The Batman Begins, Dark Knight, and Dark Knight Rises. I don't watch that. You know I don't watch Batman. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I'm throwing Lord of the Rings in there. I love Lord of the Rings. I know it's your favorite stuff. Mm-hmm. But Lord of the Rings is just, it's a stellar, well-done franchise. Honorable mentions Die Hard, because Die Hard 2 is garbage. Die Hard. The first and third ones are great, and then, I don't know, it kind of tails off and I get lost, because they started making a bunch more. Jackass, because all the jackasses are good. (laughs) Fistful of Dollars, Clint Eastwood. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. And the Naked Gun movies. Come on, man. The Naked Gun movies. How about Airplane? I mean, there's some good stuff in there. And not (laughs) Top 5, Star Wars, Harry Potter, and the Godfather movies. Sorry. They just, as a franchise, they're not that great. I know that's a weird take, but... If Goodfellas is better than The Godfather, then The Godfather franchise cannot be on a list. If an individual <laughs> movie is better than the best one in the series. I'm just saying. Are you a casino guy? 
Do you like the movie Casino? It's all right. It's a good movie. It's all right. I've seen it. I will say it's a long one. But it is a good one. I like Casino better than The Godfather, if I'm being honest. You I can tell that you care. All right. Well, on this sad sack of a you, note. Oh, 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 time out. How do you like Casino better than The Godfather? Because the wedding scene and The Godfather, the opening scene, is way too fucking long. We might not be able to be friends anymore based on that comment. Yeah, well, maybe what? based on your comment about Casino. The wedding scene in The okay. Godfather, I, I, the I, I, opening I, I, scene, is too long. <laughs> So that's your issue. The opening scene is too long. Yeah. Godfather is a great, like, it's all time a great movie. When the opening scene is a quarter of the movie, it kind of just drags, man. Goodfellas, they're blowing shit up in five minutes. Hey. What? No, you said Casino is better than Goodfellas. So we, I mean, no, Godfather. No, no. It is. Oh, no, you didn't just say a good fellow. Okay. Yeah, I was just giving a reference as, like, in The Godfather, you know, come on already. And the other thing that really bugs me about The Godfather is there's people at this wedding contemplating, like, stealing the money. And it's like nobody at that wedding would ever talk about something like that. Because of who's there. And so that particular scene and a very long scene, I'm just like, good God, man. Let's get along with this thing. Once it picks up, it's fantastic. And I understand that it does all the character introductions in that scene and everything, but it's like, there's a, you know? <laughs> it's not the perfect mafia movie. It's not. It, it's not. By any but stretch. It's better than Casino. Maybe in that sense, but as far as entertainment purposes, if you said we're sitting down and watching either The Godfather or Casino, more times than not, I would probably pick Casino. Yeah, because Godfather probably, you probably don't got the time to watch it. But if you don't Casino's Godfather, like three hours. Godfather's two parts. No. The Godfather 1 is 1. The Godfather 2 is 2. I don't care what the titles were. Part one and part two or movie yeah. one and movie two. No, you watch them together. Maybe. No, you don't. You That's like saying together. you watch all the Harry Potters together. There's nah, eight different parts. Sense. You got to watch it all together. It's one story. That's yeah. silly. That's, That's why it's called a franchise. There's they're true. separated on purpose. It's the same story yeah, separated in segments. Yeah, but the Godfather is different. No, it's not. It's a special movie. Special movie. If the Godfather part one and two came out at the same time, then fine. But they didn't. So they're two separate movies. They're not the same movie cut into two parts. That doesn't count. Yes, it does. But come on. You win. Potato, tomato, win. whatever. I hope you have a great St. Paddy's Day. How about that? How about we leave it on that note? Because this has been a weird episode anyway. I'm going to be honest. Okay, buddy. Well, on that note. You said I'm not wearing green on St. Paddy's Day. I'm sorry. I'm getting messages from work. I too. didn't say I'm not wearing green on St. Paddy's Day. I'm trying to wrap it up, and I can't because my partner isn't paying attention. I am. You said green on St. Paddy's no, Day. No, I didn't. That's what I'm saying. I know you're at oh, work. Really? I know you have to go back to work. Let's wrap this up. Everybody have a great St. Paddy's Day. I love you. I love you, Mike. I love you, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Love you, too. Man. Have a good one.